before I go on, I would like to encourage more of you out there, those of you watching me out there, I want you to share, share this video or share this live feed. I want uh, the first 500 persons to come on, then I will begin to talk. Because what I'm about to say here today is very important. Uh, the first 500 persons to come on, uh, then I will begin to talk. So I want you to share, share more to, to people, share. Uh, wherever you are, just keep sharing, just keep sharing today. Uh, all of the bigger, bigger Gs that you want to know are going to be unveiled to you. Uh, my name is Boema JV Boema. I am the, the great lion uh, in this jungle. I am uh, the man who fear nobody. I know they've made several attempts on my life to kill me. Uh, yesterday, uh, some individuals were again dispatched uh, to do whatever they can do to me. They've sent communications to all of the uh, uh, various airports to see how they can embarrass me, whatever I'm, uh, I'm about to travel. Uh, there are so many things that we're going to be talking about today. Today we'll go into the reason why uh, President George Weir is failing the people of Liberia. So uh, we're going to be talking about that, the reason why President George Weir is failing the people of Liberia. I want you to come on, come on wherever you are. Just click, just share, just keep sharing. Share, I want the first 500 persons to be on. Uh, then I will begin to unveil those very important information to you because we need to let the public know uh, this is not about flow beating. This is not about filibustering. It is about letting the public know about some of those major, major things that have happened since President George Weah became president in Liberia. Some of those dangerous things that have happened in Liberia. And why is it that the president, that the Liberian people, the vast majority of the people elected, why is it that this president is failing so soon? Why is it that the Liberian people is not uh, 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 why is it that the government that the people elected overwhelmingly, why is it that this government has failed uh, so miserably to actually cater to the plight of the people? Why is it that President George Weir has failed to perform as a leader that, uh, that, that, he, that we all expected him to be in a way that we all expected him to be? So this is, this is going to be my last podcast for the month of January after today. I will have to come on again uh, in later part of this year. So I want you to come on live. Uh, I want you to share, share so that more people can benefit from what I'm about to talk about here this evening. We're going to be looking at uh, the George Weir government. Uh, we'll start again from the campaign. Uh, uh, we'll go again from, from the campaign to the setting up of the government, the activities of some of those greedy officials in George Weir government, some of those personal worth that majority of them have been able to accrue since this man became president. Uh, uh, so uh, since I said initially that the first 500, I'm still waiting for you. Uh, don't be don't be mean with the information. Please share to other people. Please share to other. I want more people to come on live. You know, before I can begin to talk, I want to see more people on this live feed because this is about the betterment of Liberia. This is about improving our country. This is about making Liberia the kind of a nation that we want it to be. This is about improving the life of our people. The vast majority of those who struggled in the, in the jungles to ensure that President George Weir become president of this nation, those individuals, you know, that is what we want. I, I, I don't care about the personal view of few other people. You know, it, it doesn't matter about, it is not about when you are talking, it is about uh, uh, the sincerity in what you're saying. That is what matters. That is what the people want to hear, you know. So share it. I want more people to view. I want more people to view because we have so many things to unveil to you here this evening. Uh, it is going to be a very long podcast here tonight. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of issues here. Uh, the, the juju is definitely going to be part of it. And how each of these officials, how they carry about or they carry on these very uh, unscrupulous spiritual activities against the president. And all of those things, we're going to be talking about them. They've made threats on my life. They've made attempt to kill me. Uh, uh, Bill Torrey, as I speak to you now, he visited his juju man. He told the man to kill me. And they are still on it. They have made several attempts. They, they want to ensure that I can be eliminated. 
uh, they, they are saying, I'm not normal. Do you see me like somebody who is not normal? Do you see me like somebody who is crazy? I'm very normal. I'm very sound. I'm, I'm, I'm very calm. That is the reason why today I'm doing it in a very calm way. I want people to actually understand what I'm about to say here. Okay, uh, let me begin the process. I joined CDC in 2017. Prior to me becoming a member of CDC, I had briefly supported the Liberty Party. I was never a member of Liberty Party. I was never a member of the Liberty Party. I was just a supporter of the Liberty Party. They're trying to hack this page. Don't worry. They, today, you can succeed. I, I feel it beating your hacking stuff. Today, you can succeed. You know, all your hacking technique, I know it. So, a Leon, your Sam, Sam Sion, killer, killer Sam Sion, your secret, are bringing it all today. Since you see nobody pop cast to hijack but mine. Today, all the people that you be killing in Morovia, I will expose you today, including my own killing Benin, the, the assignment that they gave you to come and kill me. Today, I'm going to expose you. Okay? So, just be there, just be hacking. You hack and say, I will come back live again. Let me just tell you. You hack and say, I will come back. So, a Leon, your So, I joined, a, I joined the CDC out of a conviction. I can remember prior to me joining the CDC, I was contacted by the Unity Party with high discussion. Uh, but then it was uh, former finance minister, Augustic Bay Gafuan, or uh, who was then the foreign minister, who engaged me to, or who I just, yeah, who engaged me to, to support the Unity Party. But then his office was right on uh, Kerry Street, Kerry and, and Center Street intersection. And I told him, I said, no. I said, I'm still thinking on what to do or where to go. So when I went, when I went home that day and I, I told my wife, I said, look, I think from, from the way I see things going, I would like to support President George Weir. Uh, even though United Party approached me and they gave some offers, but I think I can support President Weir. I believe that he can lead Liberia and uh, I think from the look at things, I think he's going to be the next president of this country. I think I can give him my support, you know. So I immediately decided to venture into the premise of the CDC. When I went to CDC yeah, that very day, I met my Pekin, uh, Jerome. Jerome is now in the in Canada. I met him. I met uh, Bamba. I met a few of the other young guys then who were in the in the youth league. They I met uh, Mayor Koji now, and I told him, I said, my man. I've come to join the People's Revolution, and I'm here to ensure that you guys can succeed in, in making President George we are the next president of the Republic of Liberia. So I joined the CDC out of a true conviction. When we went to CDC, I was taken to the Sacramento tree, and few uh, rituals were performed. Uh, that's the normal thing we do. When you join the CDC, they will take you to the Sacramento tree. They perform the ritual. They, at the end of the day, you become a member of the party. Then the following day, I met President George Weir. But before I could join CDC, my man Koji told me, my man, why are you rushing to join the party? We want to have a big program for you and put something in the envelope to give to you. I told him, I said, no, I don't want anything from anybody. I'm coming to this party because I believe that this man called President George Weir is going to be the next president of the Republic of Liberia. And I'm convinced that if he becomes president, and he'd follow what he has already promised to do for the Liberian people. I'm very convinced that Liberia can go beyond the way, the, where it is now. So I, I, I joined the CDC out of that conviction. Nobody gave me a dime. Went through the campaign. There was no village in the Republic of Liberia. There was no town, no community that President George Weah visited in 2017 that I didn't go with him, both in the first round and in the, in the runoff. I'm not saying it to beat my chest. I'm just unveiling to some of you who keep calling me to know that we have our own role to play. We have our own role to play in making this revolution a success. We have our own role to play in making President George Weah become president of the Republic of Liberia. When, uh, when we went through that process, then we went to the election, the first round, President George Weah did not get the 50, the required number that he was to get to become president. So we had to go again to the various counties to convince our people and encourage them to support the government or presidency or, or the election of President George Weah. Then he was a senator. And to God be the glory on December 26, 2017, we won that election. We went to that pool, December 26, 27, 28, 29, 
the electoral pro the 20, 20, between 26, 28, 29, a lot of us already knew that George Weah had won the election. So the electoral process uh, was declared uh, 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 close, and George Weah became the official winner. Immediately, George Weah won that election. Miguel uh, Tour and this other guy, I'm always forgetting his name. He's the vice president for ECOWAS. I'm just doing a review, a review of what I spoke about three days ago or four days ago so that people can know that we're not making stories up here. You know, uh, these three guys, they went immediately to Burkina Faso. The first country they visited was Burkina Faso. They visited uh, Togo. They visited uh, 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 Ivory Coast. And they visited Benin. Those were the five countries that they went to. And Miguel Tour and this guy who is now the uh, 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 the vice president for ECOWAS, uh, representing Liberia, he and he was a guy who actually led the chat to introduce Tour and all of those guys to these people. So they went and they performed their their, their, their whatever they could do. Tour and Miguel they returned to Liberia, but Tour had to go back to Africa Coast where he he had stayed before the election. And when Miguel returned to Liberia. Then seditious became agitated. They wanted to know, some of us wanted to know what was in the victory for us. For instance, other individuals became very agitated. They wanted to know whether if they were going to get job and other stuff. So the president realized that the pressure was getting too tough. He, he told, he immediately called a meeting at Jamaica Resort and told Miguel to inform the party secretary that was headed by MESCO at the time, or that is still headed by MESCO, or, or, or the, to, that was headed by Jangako, deputized by Mesco, to collect the CV from all of the uh, partisans across Liberia, those who are qualified and capable and competent enough to work, to collect their CVs and see how they could be placed into positions that they had desired to work in. And people brought a CV. Unfortunately, while those CVs were being brought, Miguel opened an entire business. Miguel started collecting money from people who are working in the Unity Party government. At the same time, giving them jobs, recommending the, those individuals to the president, for instance, for work. Like, for instance, Water and Siwa, two positions there, they were sold out. The National Oil Regulatory uh, uh, Corporation or Authority, two, uh, the, another position was sold out there. Also, the, the NUCA. The, the, the National Oil Company of Liberia, Miguel sold those positions out. And, and, and while seditions were there agitating, hoping that they were going to get job, uh, Miguel had engaged in this very serious business. At the time, he had his house right opposite Era Supermarket. When you get to Era Supermarket, you look across the road, you'll see this little avenue going. There's a big estate there. That is the area where Miguel was living. And Miguel collected enough money then Miguel bought a house. He bought a house from a family on the VOA uh, community, in the VOA community area there, along the Robert International Airport Highway. And when he bought that structure, one group of the family got angry. They said because they were not in the know of Miguel buying this house. So they came to take the property. In fact, they claimed that they had an official document for the property. So I said they will not agree for Miguel to to buy the house. So Maguire had, that is how Maguire, because he didn't have much money left, he had already spent the first 250,000 United States dollars for that property. So he had to reach out to John B. Davis at the LBDI for him to give him money. When Front Page Africa published that article, Maguire came out and said that he took loan from LBDI. Yes, he took additional money from LBDI, but the first 80% of that money to buy that property came from Maguire's personal pocket. Imagine we had just come to government. Maguire had not worked for almost three years. He didn't have any source of income. The only source of, source of income Maguire had was to sell positions to ex-officials in the United Party. Some of them who were, who felt like threatening individuals who, for instance, were Airmark, Airmark rather, as being corrupt. Some of them ran to Maguire to bribe him just so that they could soften the ground for them, you know. Maguire could do all of these things because he had gone to Burkina Faso, he had gone to Lomé, he had gone to Benin, he had gone to, to, to Africa Coast to, to, to do juju. He, someone to and this other guy. Today I got, I had a picture. We took pictures all together of me and this fellow. You know, then he had gone to these people to be able to, to get juju so that he can manipulate the president. And indeed, he succeeded in doing that. So, 
He succeeded in doing that. So when we came, when, when they came to Morovia, he became very ruthless in selling positions. He became very, very ruthless. Very ruthless. Later on, Tue and the other guys joined him. On January 22nd, 2018, following the inaugural ceremony of President Bia, Maguire, Tue, and this, this is their friend that is now at Equus. I don't know his name because I didn't see him until after the election. So that's why I'm not too familiar with him. You know, so please pardon me. I'm, I don't know him because he wasn't there during the campaign. He only came after the first round. So that's the reason why I don't know him much. So this fellow, he, Miguel, and Tua, they immediately President George Bia got inaugurated and they were having the, 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 uh, the, the inaugural ball at Executive Pavilion on Broad Street. While we were there drinking wine and eating chicken, Miguel Tue and his colleague, later on, they included Sam Manor there. Later on, they included Sam Manor because Sam Manor was already perceived as the incoming press secretary. So they needed their conspiracy to have some legitimacy. So they crafted a list and submitted it to Sam Manor. They didn't even have access to the e mansion website at the time. The first listing of President Weir's government was published on Facebook. It was not published on the e mansion Because those were the individuals, that was how they were in rush. Maguire and others, Maguire appointed himself as Minister of State for Presidential Affairs. Tua appointed himself as Minister of Finance. Nobody appointed President Weir did not appoint Tua. This is a, this is a, this is a mistake a lot of you guys making. President Weir, Tua was imposed on President Weir by himself, by Tua himself, because they are already playing with their juju. So they, they, they had the president in the bottle a day. Anything they told him at that time was final. Tua Maguire, Maguire appointed himself as the Minister of State for Presidential Affairs, Tua appointed himself as Minister of Finance, and this guy, who is now the Vice President representing Liberia at ECOWAS, he appointed himself in that position. They imposed themselves on the government of President George Weir. They imposed themselves. They completely hijacked the entire revolution from the real people who were the faces. At that time, few individuals are earmarked other positions. Koji wanted to be to go to NSA or the, or the Minister of Youth and Sport as deputy. Deputy in charge of youth development. Maguire then stepped on it. He wanted to go to NSA, they stepped on it. Few guys who were close to Koji, they encouraged him and said, my man, they think they made him want to hijack the process for you. So my girl, Piso said it they had gone to this place here they called Palm Spring to have a drink that night. Koji mobilized some of his zebra unit, they went there. Why Miguel and Tua were sitting there, Koji went there and started kicking their butt. Koji kicked the hair out of them. Chung the entire, wasted the liquor that was on the table. He wasted it. So that how Tua woke up. Tua said, my man, militant. Come here, he Koji said, don't call me militant. I'm not mean, that the, that the kind of way you're seeing her. That why I went to your position. He made some utterances that I cannot mention now because of some spiritual reasons. You know? He said that the how you can take us to be militant. Why make me militant? When you know how we struggle to get to that place, that y'all do all the first cabinet and left my name out. He said, something wrong with y'all. Y'all crazy. So when President Weir heard about that rumor, it was, that was when President Weir called Koji now and told him, go and bring your own listing so that I can appoint your own people. So that was how the listing from the youth league surfaced before the president death. So Koji instructed Milaya Zer Sharif. Who was, who happens to be the deputy youth league, one of the deputy youth league chairs. So Melaza Zer Sharif was responsible to collect the CVs from all of those people. In fact, it was at that time that my CV too were collected. You know, I put in my name for several positions and I, I got one of the positions at the Liberian Broadcasting System. But for the youth league to surface, Koji had to stand up and fight for the young people in the party. If Koji had not met Miguel Tue and Piso at Palm Spring and Wesley Aleko and Cost Marcos, CDC, you would not have seen Koji at City Hall. So the president asked Koji, where do you want to go? And Koji told the president, I want to be the city mayor. Miguel Tue 
they were against it. But Koji put them to order and told them, I'm not blaming you. So they, they got scared, they back off. That was how the second listing came out. That had the current city mayor name on it, Dean S. Tawale, the assistant minister at, uh, 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 minister of justice, Emmanuel Johnson, who also be, happens to be the assistant minister for youth development and the minister of youth and sport, and the rest of the other young, including Melissa Zia Sharif. You know, our own listing came up after Koji's listing. You know, so that is, that is just a, a crush of how the appointment were made. So when this appointment surfaced, things started to become tougher in the party. Things started to become tougher. Magyo wanted to have a complete control over the government. So Magyo decided to ostracize people who were not on his side. Then the Rick Maros started between he and Molu. Because Molu had wanted to go to National Court Authority. Magyo said it would not happen. Because it was Molu that undermined that, that, that Molu had undermined him all through his chairmanship. So he said Molu will not go to NPA. So here Molu, Molu too told him, then if I can't go to NPA, then you have to leave the party chairman. The, you have to leave the chairmanship of the party. You have to leave the chairmanship of the party. If I can't go to, 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 to if I can go to, to National Port Authority as a managing director, then myself will ensure that you will not continue as chairman. That was how the battle for Supreme Message in the party began between Magyo and Malou. Magyo wanted to be the chairman of the party at the same time serving as Minister of State for Presidential Affairs. And Malou said, no, it will not happen. You have to decide on one. President Weir couldn't do anything. He sat. But Malou to be a very powerful guy in the CDC and he was able to rally the disgruntled seditions at the time, those who couldn't get jobs, those who are not getting the appointment, those who saw Magyo as a threat to them coming into the government, they rally around Molu, and that process became very tense. It became so tense that Magyo even wanted to kill Molu. But unfortunately, he couldn't make it. Moba Molu became the chairperson of the CDC. After President Weir finally told Magyo, in one of the informal discussions, that Magyo, you have to decide whether to be chairman of the party, or you work in my office. Maggie realizing that the party had, the, the party didn't have money to give him. He couldn't have, he couldn't be in the party outside of the government. So he decided to waive the, the, the CDC chairmanship position in order for the, for him to settle for the, for the Minister of State for Presidential Affairs position. So that was how Maggie became the Minister of State and abandoned the chairmanship position. So what did Magé do? When Magé became, when Magé finally forgot the position of the chairmanship of the party, Magé went after every individual that he saw as being an ally to Molu. That is why the infighting began in CDC. So people like Mesco and, and Louis Wright, those guys that were very close to Molu, Magé started to marginalize those people. So you will, you will notice that Louis Wright and other people, they were qualified to work. They didn't get a job until after almost uh, 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 six months, into almost a year after the government. And, and Mexico didn't get a job until after a year. All of those people that were close to, Mag to Malou, they were marginalized, including uh, uh, Chie. I know he will say I'm lying. And uh, uh, this Slova Chie, he was another guy close to Malou. They just gave him a job this day because he was close to Malou. So he couldn't get a job. They were always seen around Molu. So all of those guys that were always seen around Molu, they became very, very marginalized by, by Magil. Magil marginalized those people extremely. Because Magil had control over the system. Magil had used a studio on the president. There was nothing that Magil brought to power. Magil had not worked in government. He didn't bring any experience to serve as Minister of State for Presidential Affairs. Besides he being serving as assistant minister for internal affairs, honor Ellen, and later resigning to go back to CDC. That was the only experience Maggie brought. He didn't have anything to bring. You know, the only thing Maggie brought, the CV Maggie brought to President Weir was Juju CV. Maggie brought Juju. Maggie brought enough medicine and he ensured that he, he could, he could do whatever he wanted at the end of the presidency. 
marginalized those that that he saw as threat in the CDC for the years preceding to the election of George Weah, and he succeeded in doing that. He stepped on those people. He ensured that they could not shine in the government. He ensured that those individuals, including women in the in the women league, some of them, you know, they, I won't call their names now because they will feel afraid. They will think that I'm jeopardizing their job. But those were all females. Those were all ladies. They were being marginalized by Magil. Those are all those are all people that were marginalized. Magil's only CV that he brought to the government of CDC was Juju CV. Juju was what Magil brought. Magil Samuel Twe. Samuel Twe appointed himself. Caught me anyway. Samuel Twe appointed himself when they came back from Burkina Faso, Ivory Coast, Benin, Togo. Samuel Twe gave himself the job of finance minister. President Weir was now looking into Twe's direction to be his finance minister. President Weir's Weir position he wanted to get to Twe was now finance minister. He didn't want, he was, he was not thinking in that direction, but they hijacked it. There are big guns in the CDC level government that you can ask now. Go and ask some of those elders in the CDC, including the governing council. You ask those people, if they tell you in secret, the things I'm telling you, don't never respect me. When I come on live, don't look at me, they will view it. So that was how Tue, Magil, and this guy who is in, uh, uh, in, 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 in ECOWAS now representing Liberia, that was how they imposed themselves on the government. President Weah's intention had been to send Magil to Ministry of Internal Affairs. But because Magil had already compromised that job for somebody, one of my papers too in government, he already compromised it, so he decided to insist that he should be the minister. In fact, he wrote the letter. He just presented the president. We are. Is it you? the first appointment here. Wait, President. We are saying again. Anything you decide. Hey, they are already cooking. He didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know what he was doing. He he was already. Yeah, he had finished completely. The cooking, the burying. He he too. When he became president, for him to go and consult God and tell God, take you. He went to Melissa Mel first to tell the Melissa people to empower him so that he can be powerful president. So Magui then went to somewhere that was bigger than him. And when they came back, Juju passed Juju. You know, only, only God they can't try. But they were able to so long president. We are already deviated from the path of God. He decided to go to Juju Metu for consultation. Magui then lowered him. So he too, Magui then to use that as a means to be able to, to impose themselves upon his government. And when Magui became the Minister of State for Presidential Affairs, he marginalized almost everybody. He marginalized almost everybody, including initially Betoway. When they came up out the they marginalized Betoway, they sent Betoway to, to the, to the, uh, uh, to Lipa. Betoway didn't want to go to that place. Betoway's intention, he, he had wanted to be at finance ministry or to go to the central bank as one of the deputy governors. Go, Bill was never intending to go to, to Lipa. But after they made the appointment, Bill too went to his own Ajuju man. The hard bill was made to go into that medicine where he can't take back. He passed around with human being private part in his wallet. The hard bill was made to do that. Because he wanted to, to get closer to President Via to get the kind of power that the other people got. So the hard bill had to go to that extent. So that is how you saw, you ask President Via why he dismissed the woman from, from NPA. They will not give you any reason. You ask President Via. Why he took that woman for NPA? They will not tell you any sound reason why they took that woman. The woman was in China doing her lay with the president. He had gone to China with the president. Why in China with the president? They had the president send communication to Morovia that she was no longer national. They all of them in the plane. They have a jolly They even able to consult her that all will come in with you. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. So that was how that lady left or lost her job at the National Port Authority. Beethoven too went and empowered himself in an African medicine way. You know, but all of those things will not last. It will not last. So, Fina Bono took up with to follow the prayer. Fina realized that she was losing the grip Komuna in the government. Fina realized that she was losing the grip. When President Wea go to a program, she will tell the late Muna Peham Youngblood to officially uh, uh, introduce he, even though Finabono was a, a chief of protocol in the presidency, so Finabono realized that this was threatening to her office. So she too 
Two consultations took up with the that they should go to Ivory Coast and consult one juju man in Ivory Coast. That was how Finabono brought the dust. There is this dust that she brought. She will put it in the president food. She will put it in the president food like this. And they set it on the fire. The more that dust get hot on the fire, the more it get hot in the pot. That is how President Kuya will get hot for Finabono. Finabono, I'm going to against her. I've, we have never crossed paths in CDC. She has never done one wrong to me one day. She wronged me one day to my God in heaven. She do nothing to me one day. She has never hurt me in my life for anything I'm looking for. But Finabono too is a serious juju infested person around the president. She will put it in the food because she's not a cook for the president. It is the president, it is Smith Tobey's wife who is the cook. Because she too, she wants to maintain her job. She can take this dust, put it in the president's food, and the president will eat it. So that is the reason why, that's the reason why you see the president is being used as the way he is being used. That's the reason why you see Finabono has to go to that route of even slapping the first lady. Tell me which chief of protocol in the history of Liberia that has slept first lady before. Y'all tell me. Y'all just gave me one chief of protocol in the entire world that ever slapped the first lady. Only Finabono has set that record because he had tied President George Weir in a hole where President Weir cannot move. Whatever they tell President Weir is final. Whatever they say to him is final. These are all factual things that I'm saying. You know, these are all factual things. Nothing happened to me, I'm okay. These are all factual things. I decided to say it in this 21 days fast and prayer so that somebody can take because this is the time that I fear God the most. They are all, they have all manipulated George Weir. George Weir became vulnerable to them. He became vulnerable because he too, instead of just depending on the side of God, they decided, he decided to follow the path of Satan. The next thing they have in mind is to come after the life of President Weir. But they are worried. If they, if they go after his life, how will President Weir, how would they become president? The only way they can become president, they will have to get rid of Joel. That was how my girl decided to start marginalizing Joel, making sure that Joel's relationship with the president can be strained so that Joel can get so angry and resign and run away. But Joel to be a strong woman and Joel, if you are following God, I'm appealing to you, continue to worship God. Because these guys have gained up for many days to get rid of you. They have gained up for many days to get rid of you. But if you are worshiping God, worship God with your whole heart. I'm appealing to you. One day God will reveal himself to you. I want you to serve God. My girl, to her, they wanted so much for the woman to leave power. So the first thing, they started creating a feud between the president and, and Joel. The next thing, to her, they started to start strangulating Joel's office. Back of the benefit that Joel's staff, including Joel herself, were entitled to, they cut it off. They did it. The vice president, Joel, was telling her, pardon me. They did it because they wanted to marginalize this woman so that she could get angry and just walk out of the government. Then President Weir will be left with no option to appoint one of Adam McGill or Twe as a vice president. When that happens, they will continue to manipulate the president and get rid of him. Then they will take care of the country. That's it! That is the fact! That is the fact! That is the fact! That's the fact! That's the fact! Their plan had been well orchestrated prior to coming to power. The only thing they be doing is to execute that plan. The only thing they be doing is to execute that plan. The only thing they be doing is to execute that plan. They've already sent people to kill me. As I speak to you, my life is under serious threat. I've informed the U.S. State Department. I've informed all of the embassies around the world, including the United Kingdom embassy. Their plan is to kill me because all of this information I'm giving, these are factual information. They have reported my page to Facebook for Facebook to shut me down. That's the reason both of you, you notice I created a different account today because anytime Facebook will shut my page down. And I don't want anybody to silence me. When you shut this page down, I will go to another page and talk the same thing I'm seeing. I'm not looking into any paper or book. I'm saying a verbatim. These are things that are buried in my brain and been there for the last years. So their, pre their aim was to be able to get rid of the president. So when you see them shouting, 
Where they they are. They don't love you, President Weah. Trust me, they don't love you. Me, President Weah, to my God, to the, amen. For the 21 days I go to, you call me free to go work in your government. I will not work in your government again. Free, I won't work in your government. The best thing, the worst thing, the worst mistake that I ever made as a young man was to accept that green letter for you, President Weah. Because I didn't know, I thought that your government was going to effectuate the change that we promised to the Liberian people. I didn't know that your government was a government of looters, a government of blood suckers, a government of people who could go any length to kill all because they wanted to protect what they have. All because they wanted to protect what they have. Have you asked where, how the other people died? Why is it that the other, the internal auditor was just about to release a report that could have implicated to it and some of the officials of WEA? Fortnight to that pro, to that particular release, this man lost his life. All we could hear was that the man fell from the, from the barrister and died. Why? Why do you think President Weah is so sensitive to the plight of you? Because they have made him so stupid. President Weah, I'm sorry to use that word, but they have made you so stupid. You can't, everything you do for me, those that are close to me, I can tell them you forgive the president. Because everything you do, you're not doing it by yourself. You are being manipulated. These guys, their aim is to make the Lacrimian people to hate you so much. And they are, this is what they're going to do. They will continue to marginalize Vice President Joao Taylor. They will even continue, VP Taylor, if you are sitting somewhere, get thanks to what I'm saying. They will even send people to kill you if, if they need be. Their aim is to ensure that before 2023, you are not in that vice presidency. That's their aim. To the them, Miguel. That's their aim. The one president, we have to appoint one of them. Before, the before 2023, they want to take hold of the presidency. Yes, Charles here, don't call me. Please, don't call me. Charles here, I beg you, don't call me, okay? You want, you can monitor after the monitor, you can call me. My life is already in danger. They have threatened to kill me. I'm going to unveil whatever I have to the Liberian people. So that when the Liberian people get the information, whatever they want to do, let them do it. But my life is in danger already. As I speak to you, my life is in serious danger. My life is in danger. Liberian people, I want you all to know, President Weir, his, his President Weir's officials, Nathaniel McGill, Bill Trawe, Tokon Kui, and, and Finabono and, and Samuel Tua, they have all orchestrated a plan and sent Sam Seyon to get rid of me. They, their aim is to kill me. That is their plight. Their entire aim is to kill me. This is an SOS call to all Liberians, wherever you are, know that they have planned to kill me. I will not sit and die without unveiling this information to the people. Okay? So just know that this is a plan, is a well orchestrated plan. That is their plan. Their plan is to kill me. Minister Tua and, 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 and Bill Trawe, Nathaniel Magill, and, and Finabono Tokonkui. They have sent, they have instructed Sam Soyon to go at every length to ensure that they kill me. I want you all to know. I want you all to know. The plan of Magill, he don't love President Weir. Magill want to hijack the government. Magill want to hijack the government. His aim is to make sure Joao Ela the get rid of Joao Ela, Joao get fair and leave the presidency. Then President Weir will be compelled now to appoint one of them to be vice president. Then they will get rid of President Weir and take over the, the country. That is what they want. That is what they want. Nothing else. I have absolutely nothing against these people. I have no enmity against them. But that's just what they, they are doing. That's just what they are doing. Their aim is to destroy you. Their aim is to hijack the government. And I will not sit here and allow that to happen. I was close to Tua. You, you saw somebody beginning I saying it. I was very close to Tua. I used to enter Tua's bedroom. I was close to Miguel. They used to call me their picking. I know that well. I was the only person I was not close to was Finabolo. I was not lying. Bill Tua, I was not too close to him. But Miguel, Tua, I was too close to them. I know everything about them. I know them in and out. They don't love you, President Weah. Their only main aim is to destroy you. Ask them what they want to do Burkina Faso when you won election. Ask my girl. Why you, my girl got a special room to a house. Ask him why you can go do that before you go. Why you can wait for everybody to go to work before you take back. Why my girl can wait for everybody to leave it, including a wife new day. That other opportunity to pass it around after that. She's so much in love today. You left man for almost five years. 
because they never have having money now because you, by the time you are president, we are one election, you took your, your bono and ran to him after you suck on a serial way. The next time you come in my inbox, I will disgrace you. I want you the money. You will come in my inbox again. I just give you one shot. Then opportunities like you. Let me forget about you, sir. Why you think my girl will wait for everybody to leave it?